a part of my corporate dreams and my, you know, feelings of moving up in the ranks and things like that. I feel like I kind of left that at the hospital. You're ready. You're more than ready to start accepting clients by the time you're done with the course. So I don't believe, you know, a lot of, I get this question a lot is, you know, should I start off cheaper? Should I offer one for free? No, no. Uh, the quickest way to lose a client or to get a bad uh, perception Mm -hmm. is unmet expectations. Transaction Care, the podcast. Welcome home to the number one real estate show on the market. I am your host and resident care coordinator, Lillian Hernandez, but you can call me Lily. My goal with each episode of Transaction Care is to demystify the business of real estate from my point of view and interviews from other voices within the real estate industry around the world. I'm giving you the keys. There are no gatekeepers here. Welcome back to the Transaction Care Podcast. Today we have a wonderful guest hailing from Atlanta, Georgia. She is the owner of Time Freedom TC. She is the fierce leader of the Work From Anywhere movement, and she also has her own courses, the TC Playbook, focused on helping women launch their TC businesses in five weeks without overwhelm. So I love this already. And everyone, please welcome Courtney Rosier to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Thank you, Courtney, again. I appreciate your time and the space to just share your journey with all of us here and how you got into this crazy real estate world. <laughs> I've been following your journey online, so it was a must that I had you on the podcast. So let's just jump right in it. You've been working in the real estate industry since 2015, correct? And you launched your TC business in 2018. Um, how, so before all of that, how did, what was the your mindset in terms of now I'm doing this, but now I'm going to work in real estate, but not just work in real estate, but I'm going to be an entrepreneur. So right. how did you get there? Let's talk about that. Let's backtrack a little bit as far yeah. as you want to go and what you're willing to share with our audience today. Okay, great. Well, again, thank you so much for having me here. I think what you're doing is great with this podcast, transaction coordinators, uh, you know, any industry or any field inside the real estate industry um, other than sales doesn't get that much shine. So thank you again for having me. Um, so yeah, I tell this story a lot about what kind of catapulted me into real estate. Um, my career choice uh, for over a decade was um, property management. So I've always been in real okay. estate. Right. Um, I'm from Chicago originally. And I moved to Atlanta in 2000. And when I moved here, I, you know, back then, um, temp agencies and placement agencies, they really did a good job <laughs> of placing. <laughs> so I, you know, I originally got placed um, working um, for a commercial real estate company managing an office building. I wasn't the property manager, obviously, at that time, but I moved up in the ranks over 10 years um, into senior management role and really loved my job. I, I loved everything about it. Um, I learned something new all the time. Um, it's different from working residential real estate because you're not dealing with somebody's house. You're just dealing with them for their office. Right. Um, so, you know, they had, if they, if I got complaints, it wasn't like a major catastrophic um, type of situation. I won many awards, uh, building of the year oh, wow. awards, things like that. I really loved what I did. Um, I was what I can call myself a corporate bay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love that. The young minority woman that, um, worked really hard, um, to get things done. You know, we had budget seasons and that was a very grueling time. A lot of, I would say most of my, um, positions in that career, my boss would be an out of town boss. Um, so when he would come to town, you know, obviously he would like, you want to want to take the staff out for drinks or, you know, like it was always, and I was always available <laughs> single and just, you know, hardworking young professional. Um, and that is until I met my husband in, <laughs> in 2000. <laughs> A, what was this? 2011. Okay. We met, we fell in love. Next thing I know, girl, I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and then that same week, I got laid off. 
oh, for wow. the very first time in my life. And it was like three days before Christmas. And um, so I, I got pregnant, got laid off. And then that same week, that Friday, found out they were twins. Oh, so, my, from <laughs> zero to 100 real yes, quick. Immediately. Um, <laughs> Well, it was, it was crazy. And so during that time, um, you know, I have a mentality, like I said, I was very hardworking, have been since I was a teenager. Like I always wanted my own money. I always, you know, excelled, always found a good job, quote, yes. quote unquote. Um, and so immediately I'm like, I told my job at the time, like, you know, they gave me a severance, which was great. And then I also asked them if I could still be a part of our organization. It was called Build, uh, BOMA, uh, which is Building Own Office Managers Association or something like that, um, so that I could still like go to networking events to try to land a new job. So, Oh, I love that. Yeah. So after a couple of months, I did land a job. Um, and they called and offered me the job. And that same day I had a doctor's appointment and I had something going on, some newfound issue with my heart because of pregnancy. Ooh. Who knew? Yeah. That you have all this, your body doing crazy stuff. Right. And they put me on bed rest that day. Oh. Um, so I was like 18 oh. weeks pregnant. And so it was, they said, you, the doctor was like, no, ma'am, you can't accept the job. You know, you're going to be on bed rest for the duration. Um, just because it's high risk. And at the time I was con- what they considered geriatric, <laughs> even though I was 32 or 33 years old, um, that's considered old when you're trying to have a baby, True. especially twins. So, um, so yeah, so I couldn't take the job. So then it's like, fine. Okay. What is God trying to tell me? So right. I'm, at home, I'm like, okay, I can't get a job. Luckily I had the severance. Just sit down and chill. And that's what I did. And like by 25 weeks, I was not only on bed rest, I was on hospital bed rest. Um, And that was for the duration. So I had them 10 and a half weeks later at 36 weeks, which is full term for for twins. And during that time, I had a lot of time to (laughs) think about what I wanted my life to be and what what it actually meant to actually be pregnant (laughs) and what that's going to look like when they come. Like, you know, you don't really... Have we time don't about that. Exactly. Yeah. We don't give it ourselves enough time and space to process and self-reflect. Exactly. And even and I would feel have. the fact that, oh wow, I was just laid off, but now I have this time and opportunity, or I'm just supposed to be a vessel for these babies at this time. And it's and I had, to, I had to come to grips with that because it's like, okay, what? You know, I gotta, you know, but I, I followed doctor's orders. I really did sit there, but, in, but mentally, um, had I, you know, just quickly tried to get a job and go back to work mm-hmm. and stuff like that, I would not have been able to really plan out what I really wanted for my life. Um, so I feel like, um, during that time, it, I had a strong feeling that, you know, I want to be present, um, for my kids and for my family. Like I want to be available for them and things like that. Um, so, I mean, even during that time though, I, I still hadn't really fully gotten on board with being a a full-time entrepreneur. Like over the years prior to that, I've had snow cone trucks and, you know, like I'm, I'm entrepreneurial, but I'm also a Virgo. So I feel like (laughs) I'm very much it's not perfect. Very, it right. Well, also though, very much need stability. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yes. I didn't really depend, you know, to feel like I could depend on myself to just a hundred percent provide right, right. For my business. Um, you know, queen of side hustles, full time, <laughs> I don't know. And so fine, had the babies, you know, when I left out, I feel like a part of my corporate dreams and my, you know feelings of moving up in the ranks and things like that. I feel like I kind of left that at the hospital. Mm. And so, yeah. And so um, not only both twins, but you rebirth, rebirthed yourself. Exactly. Because after that, um, again, when the twins are like maybe three months, I'm like, okay, I need to get a job. You know, (laughs) it's time for me to go back to work. You know, just, it's that ingrained in or programming baby boomer. Like my kids probably will not have that kind of, thought process like right. they already are going to be record producers and like 
they're not thinking about like a job job like exactly. how we were raised you know to to feel exactly um, like location independence time freedom is going to be normal for them right you know? and they and they had a chance to actually witness that for me as mm-hmm. well so it's already ingrained you know god didn't see it fit for me to find another job until they were 19 months wow. not for lack of trying i was trying but you know i was lucky enough to be able to stay home god still provided you know for mm-hmm. my husband and um, so at 19 months, I went back to work, found a property management job, but I noticed there was a change. I, I didn't care about that job like that. Like, you know, I did what I had to do in the parameter of time that I was there, but you will not like catch me working late. You will not catch me coming early. You will not catch me working through my lunch. Mm-hmm. Like the no. old me is gone. The <laughs> old me is gone. I have. Hey. I have more to look forward to, to my wife stronger, like I was just over it. And so Mm -hmm. like I stayed there a year and a half, but I, I, what I love about social media, especially Facebook, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm an old lady because I love Facebook, but (laughs) Facebook is a powerful tool still, especially for entrepreneurs. Right. I don't use it as much for business. I still have that I use it for business, but not as much because I still have like, that's where my friends, my family, people that know me better are on there. And so I share a lot. I overshare a lot. And so over the years, even, even before business. And so I'm able to actually tell my students, like I'm actually going to go back and pinpoint what my mindset was during this time. So I have a post where I shared an article about balance and how how can women balance um, work life balance or family being a mom whatever and you know being um, a strong uh, or not even entrepreneur but just a business person or you know employee or whatever the case yeah. and in that I I had prefaced it with you know I feel this way you know and and I remember ending it with. My five-year plan includes me working from home at least three days a week. I love that. that. Was, you know, so I I personally use Facebook. Like when I did the course and I'm able to talk about this with students and with people, I'm glad for the oversharing because mm-hmm. I've looked back now and I realized that Facebook becomes like my personal manifestation tool. Right. Like literally once it's out of my mouth, it like even so real. my husband, I was like, okay, I'm not going with the flow anymore. Yes, I do. I admit it. I want a man. And I promise like a year later, <laughs> all There's of this. about I, just once you make up your mind and you're willing, mm-hmm. it's not even oversharing. It's just, you are ready. And you're making that statement to the world, to the universe. And well, if accountability, Facebook, um, yeah, accountability, right. And if Facebook was the platform that it happened to be shared on, Mm-hmm. There, now you have concrete proof that no, I was ready on this yeah. day at this time. Yeah. Actually, and I love it. I'm my personality is one. I love dated material. Like if you get me a birthday card, I want you to put in the corner Indeed. what year. Like yeah. I have this like I can relate year, to that. <laughs> so that I can like be like okay, man, very no, sentimental. Man. Yeah, I just I like that. So with Facebook, it gives me that exact time stamp. It gives me like what my mindset was and why. So my why became, as I've worked that job, that became my why. Like I need to be able to be home. um, I need a more flexible schedule so that I can be home when the kids get home from school. Like by this time, the kids were three, gonna be starting um, pre-K the following year. Okay. So in my mind, I was saying like, okay, when they start school, I want to be able to be home or I want to be able to go to field trips if I need to without the guilt. Yes. So, you know, I don't want a boss, a male, male boss, you know, asking me it, why or, you know, making me feel some kind of way. Not or, understanding the value not, that one of my core values is my family. And facts. that quality time is really why? Like, that is it. Yeah. That's the That's reason. It. Period. Can that you? Was my- before we um, continue, I actually want to focus a little bit on the why part because I have this, I call a TC launch checklist that at the very top of it is your why. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that we have a foundation that we build 
upon much like a home you know, home is nothing without a strong foundation. And did you always have a why? Or was it in that moment later in your life where you're like, you know what, this is what feels right. And I'm going to stick to it. And I did not always have a why. I literally, the why was, I would say when, when I, um, said it out of my mouth what I wanted which was the flexibility yes Um, and then from there the why then was the engine Mm -hmm. that motivated me to decide what it was I was going to do so after I decided the why I was like hmm what what could I do that could give me the things that I want that flexibility that time freedom that location I love that so much yeah (laughs) that's how with the real estate. Yeah. I think, um, that's such a huge, I love that you said that because I've grown as an entrepreneur myself into kind of growing out of that mode of nine to five, get paid. That's my life. Right. And then once you find yourself in entrepreneurship, you're constantly feeling like you're at the edge of a cliff. (laughs) So you need that why to kind of reel you back in to just ease your mind a little bit. You know, when people ask me, well, how did you do it? Why did you do it? Or, you know, how do you maintain? And as I'm I'm going, I have a similar timeline to you as like in, in my fifth, I'm in my fifth year. I let people know exactly what you just said was, this is what I want, the flexibility, you know, quality time with family. I value my location independence as well Mm -hmm. how can I work around that versus you went straight for this is how much I need to get paid which yes is is a factor but it wasn't like the ultimate factor and I think a lot of us tend to get disappointed or or not want don't feel that passion with our jobs because I think we're not basing it around the right reasons you know Mm -hmm. or or our personalities or alignment so the fact that you were using your prior experience within real estate but instead of just jumping straight back into it, which you did try, right? It's still uh-huh. something's deflecting you like, no, this isn't it. This is, I need you to dig deeper. I need, yeah. that's why you got that 19 months. You got that, you know, you thought three weeks, I'm, I'm ready to get jump back in it. But the universe, yeah. God was like, no, there's a bigger plan for you. And I, I need you to find that mm-hmm. and stick to it. And these are your reasons. This is what I'm giving you to open that up for you. And I think I commend you for trusting that process as well, because it's not easy, especially when you do have two babies running, you know, following you everywhere, depending on you and the, the person you are naturally just, it's easy to just fall back into the, our old habits for the sake of quote unquote safety. Right. And And I I did, I mean, I I will say there's nothing wrong with that at all. But when there's a bigger purpose outside of that, you have to explore it. And I don't think you realize that bigger purpose until you look back on it. Of course, of course. So during the time, you know, I made, okay, so it's like, what can I do? Real estate came up. I live in Atlanta and I remember when I moved here in 2000, back then everybody had a real estate license, but back then everybody <laughs> was flipping houses. So I, I have gone to real estate, you know, school before mm-hmm. while I was working um, but I never, you know, finished it because I really didn't have the vision at the time. Like right. it was just kind of like, oh, well, that seems like the thing it's to do. Thing to do, yeah. You know, it wasn't a, anything a why attached to it. So now it's like, okay, well, real estate. Now this is in my. I had my why, but my reason for real estate was really off base because as a real estate agent, you as you're starting your business for years. Um, for some, you don't have a lot of time, uh, the flexibility you think you have. Yes, you have flexibility, but it's not a, it's not a work when you want to work or if you want to work. It's a work you, you have to work. You have to work. (laughs) You are the business, Um, you are the income, you are the janitor, you are the HR. Yeah. And so I think that's a big misconception in real estate. They think it's like, oh, big checks, commission. Yeah, they think it's some kind of lick you hit. Like they think it's like, uh, oh, it's a hustle. Get your license and you get the check. No. Yeah. You got to make the call. And it's more than the act of being a real estate agent. So it's more than a contract. It's more than showing houses, of course, but people think that that's all you do is show houses. It's not. Um, It's It's more than, yeah, it's more than even that though. Because separate from the doing, you are also a business owner. Mm -hmm. 
you have to understand business and so many people get into it. And I mean, I'm not going to say I knew everything about business, but you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to research and then put into action what you're learning or you will like you have to look at, you know, OK, I'm going to I know I don't want to do door knocking, but I need to try it once. You have to try. I know it. I don't want to you work have to do it and you have to figure out what works for you. You can't just sit there and just think that business is going to come to you just as you say you're a real estate agent, right. especially in Atlanta where everybody's a real estate just a quick break to remind you to go to transactioncarepodcast.com to join my TC community to receive weekly newsletters as well as exclusive announcements dedicated just to my community. So head to transactioncarepodcast.com and check out a few other episodes of this podcast if you haven't already. Okay, let's get back to the episode. I put my all into, so I, I decided I was going to get my real estate license because I thought that real estate agents, <laughs> work really hard in the spring, maybe in the summer, and then they had the winter the off. Winter off. <laughs> Girl, I, thought, I just thought it was this is the lie. I never thought it was a lick, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, this will give me what I need to, you know, to get to my why. And it can, but I found that you know, I got started right away, lucked up and like got in, got a mentor who's now like one of my closest friends, but like at the time, like it, it just the stars aligned for us to kind of work together. And that. so I was doing pretty well. Um, got my license in May of that year. And then all that summer I was working with her kind of doing showings for her. And she was, she was also mentoring me. Um, and she kept, she kept trying to encourage me to quit my job. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, you know, but, but by the time I quit, which was Halloween of that year, I had already had like deals in the pipeline, you know, I had already closed maybe two or three deals. And then my boss said something sideways to me about me staying late. And I just like, I quit. You know, I talked to my husband, of course, he was like, girl, quit. You know, so I quit doing it that way. It was very nerve wracking. I realized that, okay, I'm getting really ambitious with this though, Mm -hmm. as I do when I really like something and I really into it. But what I found was that in doing so, it took me further away from my why than a job ever did, than my corporate American job ever did. So because it's that's like, like you you go from a nine to five to entrepreneurship, yeah. actually a twenty four seven. Right, and, and the money, the checks are good. And of course, so it's like, oh, of course. Okay, I do want to do this, but it's not aligning with the purpose of doing it in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. So as much as for it you. Pays, for, for you. me, if it aligns for someone else, stick with right. it, go for it. Yeah. So like, you know, my husband was looking at me sideways on Sundays, like, you know, <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm never home. You know. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so it was like, okay, now I have to sit back down again and really think about what I'm doing. So mm-hmm. around the same time, my mentor, she was, she's a top producing agent. And so as she's mentoring me, she's, you know, teaching me about the contracts. We're talking about strategies, things like that. And somehow I don't, I've got, I have access to her emails. Like, I don't know what, I don't know how it happened, but she started to pay me to do her transactions. Mm, Now this is before we knew what a TC even was. (laughs) I didn't know. I don't know. I don't believe she did either because she was only doing real estate maybe a couple of years before we met even though she was a top producing agent, she had always done everything herself and it just wasn't as popular as it is now. Right. Right. Yeah. But she so, realized there was a, there was a space right. that needed to be filled. I didn't give her a price. I didn't give her, she just started paying me $350 per file and it was good money mm-hmm. because she was doing a lot of deals and, yeah. and it was teaching. I enjoyed the teaching aspect of it. I enjoyed being a part of the deals and and all of that. So that is how I actually morphed into the TC side. So I had been doing that for her, like starting around 2016 um, and exclusively working with her. And then around 2017, I did try to offer it to other agents, but I still hadn't completely solidified. Like I hadn't set up my LLC. I hadn't really, really set up my systems like they are. 
um, until 2018. And so that's when I started Time Freedom TC. We talked a lot about time freedom. And that's what I offer to my agent clients is time freedom. Like everybody wants that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how it started. It was just for me kind of realigning my why from real estate sales. Now I still sell real estate. I do because I love it, but I'm not stressed about door knocking. I only work with referrals, you know, I'm, you know, so my referrals know that this is what I do. I still promote that, but not, you know, it's just not such a stressful thing, um, you know, especially with the changes in real estate and how cyclical it is. It's just nice to be yeah. able to have that and this um, going at the same time. I, that's amazing. That's and that's <laughs> exactly why I felt a pulling towards creating a, a podcast like this, because there's a lot of misconceptions in terms of one entrepreneurship to real estate, which you covered from A to Z almost like (laughs) not just about the checks, like the journey to get that check. And then on top of that, you're still paying fees. You're still paying back any debt you may have accrued, you know, accrued on the way up there. You have to factor in the future because you may not even get a check for another few months and Mm -hmm. that operate. And then, you know, as you transitioned into transaction coordination, even, even your body language changed as you were telling that story. It's like, you perked up a bit and you're like, your why finally made sense. And Mm -hmm. I think that's important to, to factor in is that our whys are so important, but they may not always make sense in the beginning. Like you said, it's going to be trial and error. You're going to have to take risks. You're going to have to take odd jobs that you didn't think you were interested in, but along that way, all those skills you you take on will help push you along in this journey. So you mentioned that you did get your real estate license. How was that journey in terms of getting your license? Like, was it, cause for me, I'll be honest, it, it took me three attempts. I didn't actually go take the test three times. I'm going to talk about this in a separate episode because it's not about me today. <laughs> But just getting my mind in that mode of like, let's get serious. And once like you, yeah. once I made up my mind, I made it, I made a deal with myself. I respected my own journey and my, you know, my commitments to myself. It, it's almost like everything just fell into place overnight. So how mm-hmm. is uh, the journey? And are you, are you licensed anywhere else? I'm not licensed anywhere else except for Georgia. Okay. Um, for me, shockingly, because trust me, I did not. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm, a, you know, you tell yourself these things and you believe it. That right. I'm not a good test taker. Um, there was so much information. Yes. Um, the real estate exam is not easy at all. And at all. The, actual, the hours that you need aren't easy. Um, I remember I personally um, purposely did a class where I had to show up in class. Um, I think it might have been three nights a week after work from like six to 10 or something like that. I did that because, and, and but but conversely, my husband, after I got my license, maybe a year or two later, he decided to get his license oh, nice. and he did a accelerated program. I still think he went there, but it was just one week. And so that's one to week. me, that's a lot of information yeah. to get in one week. And he passed uh, on his first try as well. I passed on my first try, but I, for the way that my brain works, I mm-hmm. did it to me going to the class, the the instructor saying, look, like he, the instructors aren't even really allowing too many outside questions and scenarios because they're like, look, this is what you need to know for the test, period. Yeah. Like, you know, so they, they know how to teach to the test. Um, and then I took a cram course the week that Sunday before the Wednesday that I took the test. And after the cram course, I'm like, I'm doomed. I'm not going to pass. <laughs> it's intimidating. It was- and it's just like, I didn't, I just did not, it was so much information. And I was just like, the, the information from the cram course felt like it was new. It was just a lot. And somehow I passed. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I don't really have any kind of um, tips on it because I really was like, not because, you know, you hear too, like, like you, you're not, your story is not uncommon. Like it, I right. didn't pass on the first try. Um, it took me two or three times or more for some people. Right. So I was fully, you know, I wasn't really that confident to be honest. Um, but you know, I do recommend to do it that way. And I, I guess 
what I learned was that even though it seems like um, the information is new, somehow all that information is in there. And once you see it on the test, maybe you'll get it. But the, <laughs> the other thing too is that you learn when you talk to the instructors is that it's not whether or not you know the information, it's whether or not you're reading the question completely. Yes. So they, they formulate the questions in a way that makes that can trick you. So like the right answer could be uh, one of the, could be in the choices, but they're not asking you for the right one. They're asking you for the one that doesn't apply. That's one trick. Um, so then they, they taught us like how to underline certain things and look for certain words to kind of help you with that. Cause a lot of times it's not that you didn't know the information it's that you didn't read the question correctly. That is great advice because <laughs> that's pretty much what happened to me. So <laughs> it's important if anyone out there is interested in getting their license, or maybe you have to renew your license and it's been a while since you've taken tests, read the questions through and through. I love that you knew what kind of accountability you needed for you, you know, because yeah. like you said, even though your husband, I can't do it are, online. Yeah. Has, yeah, everyone I is built different. I can't do it online and I can't, I know that that is not going to work for me right. in my learning style. Exactly. So you just have to find what works best for you. For me, I, I like a mix of both. So for anyone out there looking to get their real estate license in any state or country, take your time, find what works best for you in terms of studying and ask a lot of questions. I love that you spoke to your instruct instructors. That's what they're there for. They're not mm -hmm. just there to throw information at you. They're there to help you and guide you along the way. So I'm glad that you brought that up too. It's just utilizing help and asking for help. That's something I need to get better at is asking for help and not being shy or embarrassed that I don't know something. Like, of course, right. you're a student. You're a student. It, right, exactly. You already are exposing yourself to not knowing something. So why and not? When I tell you, information? Like, the students that I have that are uh, not shy about worrying me to death, quote unquote, <laughs> like you know, they're, they're not shy about imposing. You know, your... I'm going to ask this, these questions, you know, I don't get this, or I'm going to, you know, ask. Yeah. Those are the ones that immediately upon finishing or before they're finished with the course on it, they're, they're on it on it. I believe that's it. a characteristic um, of success. Is it asking. absolutely is. Yeah. Just taking that initiative and realizing that you can't, whatever was holding you back previously is not going to help you catapult into the future. And you have to define your success as well of what that means to you, you know, and, and if you prefer a more quiet, less front facing role, then maybe real estate isn't for you, you know, or entrepreneurship. So speaking of that, let's get into TCing. And how did you, like, at what point did you catch your stride as a TC? Did, when did you know, you know, you did a few for that first agent and now you're like, oh, this could be a thing. But then at mm -hmm. what point did you feel like, no, this is a thing. This is my thing. I would say in 2018, I think at that time I had other clients, but I just remember it was like, okay, let me really formalize this. Mm -hmm. Like, let me treat it like a real business. Um, invest in structure in my business, whether, you know, I, I did an LLC instead of, you know, I decided to do an LLC, invest in the systems because for the longest time, even with my, my top producing client, like she would give me like 13 deals in a month oh, wow. and I was still using like a binder and checklist, which <laughs> I kind of miss that. Like I do, like I actually like to see it and, you know, yes. check it, but I need automations you get busier. You know, it helps that I did so many things manually initially to appreciate the automations that I have now and to understand like the whys behind how it's helping my business and how it's helping my clients. I can, I can I, definitely relate to the paper, the paper pushing physical paper pushing. Yeah. Had a like, binder. Yeah. I, I actually, to be honest, but the only reason why I don't do that now is, is for the automations. But even back then, like I would manually put, um, you know, put the dates in the calendar and like send her a meeting invite for the important dates. Um, now I have, uh, my TC docs does that. So I, I don't have to do that anymore. Um, it's just so many different automations that I have now um, that I didn't have then, but I, I appreciate that journey of figuring out that I needed to do that or, you know, or whatever. It's crazy how you, you start your business. Cause this is before the groups and yes, 
I know, feel like those I'll, just yeah. kind of really took off in the like since the pandemic. I, I was like 20, 2020, like I got more interest in TCing and people asking me questions around 2020, just in the last two or three years. Yeah. Like, I'll before, yeah, 19, 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too. Um, I, felt kinda, I felt kind of lonely in the first couple of years of my business. I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to do too. this and working from home. And <laughs> in 2020, it was like, after I experienced the pandemic and after I saw how, how blessed I felt to right. have the TV business during that time, right? that's when I really became called to um, offer the coaching and in, in the, by way of the um, playbook yes. because I was like more like my demographic. I mean, I have men that have taken the course, but my main target is women, you know, that can relate to me. And I was just like, man, I got 99 problems, but trying <laughs> to figure out what I'm going to do with these kids after the school just called me and told me that they're not coming to school indefinitely. Oh, I know. You know, like I, we got to call them figuring it out. and they never, they did not go back to school for another year and a half or another wow. year, school wow. year. Like we finished that school year and then there was a whole nother school year that they did not go to school. And it was just such a relief. Um, to not have to really uproot and change my whole process in life. Yeah. To accommodate that. You had it established already. And I like that you brought up automation. So a lot of a frequently asked question I get is, well, how did you know to have this template or how did you know to follow this timeline? And one, my years of experience working at a real estate office helps finding a mentor of, of, or someone to just answer those questions for you. What are some, or just give me a couple of your productivity hacks that have helped you in the last, I'd say a couple of years to really save time or just feel like you're not as in the file as much as you used to versus when you were doing things with paper. Cause I, like I said, I would do everything pretty much online, but when it came to the checklist, there was something about me physically yeah. manually like with a pen ink to the paper yeah. but then once I embraced and I just recently embraced um I use TC docs as well I'm open oh. to I'm not committed I'm just open to whatever p- programs work well for me but right now it is TC docs and for me that has been a, a game changer in the last couple of years for my business and yeah. even it, my own time management I've become a better I feel like I became a much better TC in the last two years that I have in the last 15 years before that <laughs> Right. almost embarrassing I'm like I'm sorry yeah. well, they're marketing more things to us and we right. have like more automations um for me one thing that my mentor always tried to get me to do which I still have trouble with this but I've gotten a lot better even though just like the last six months is inbox zero method oh um, that's tough <laughs> I don't know like I, I think I mentioned it like she when she was mentoring me up until like last year like I had access to her email, like she shared her email yes. with me. And so I, I would see emails as they come in because I was kind of a hybrid at first between this is before we knew what a TC was. Obviously right. now we have boundaries in our business to where we're not an assistant and a TC, but she's like my girl too. So I'm real, like, real quick, real quick. You said, yeah. you, you, you said boundaries. the magic words. Well, yes, boundaries, but TCs and assistants are two different jobs. Absolutely. We don't have to get into too much of that right. day, but I just wanted to stop and point that out because I think that's a misconception in our world and with realtors, because when they get hired on, they're told, oh, just hire a TC. They're like your assistant. And that's not the case. So right. thank you for bringing that up. I I will definitely cover that in future podcasts as well. You yeah. could come back on and we could talk about that alone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But for now, I wanted to, I just definitely wanted to stop. I, for her, I was hybrid. I was doing some assistant stuff, like, you know, managing not so much managing her emails, but just even having access to her emails. Like I don't need access to your email. Right. And and it's um, not that you can't do both. I just right. want people to understand that they are two completely different jobs right. because one day you could be picking up cleaners for them as an assistant. And then right. later that night, you're 
handling contracts. Handling contracts. So yeah. just be, just keep keep in mind that you have to differentiate the the two of them before you just dive right in. Unless right. that's what you want. You decide which one or both that you're going to do and how much you're going to charge and all of that. Good all stuff. of that, right? But, yeah, but she was inbox zero. So like because I had access to her email, as soon as she would see an email and like I guess in her mind address it or just acknowledge it, like if it's an acknowledgement email, like I would see it and then. Two minutes later, I'll come back on like, oh, let me see that email. It's gone because she immediately moved it to the proper folder. So oh, gotcha. what I would do when I first started working with her, she taught me to, we, we like to use Outlook. Um, I like out, I have Gmail, G Suite, but I like to use Outlook for, for visual purposes. I don't like the um, platform for Gmail. So we would create a folder with the address nomenclature on there. Mm -hmm. And then we would also have a folder per month. So oh, January. Okay. So whenever we see an email and once we've addressed it, you we I would just drag that email to the address folder. Well now I pay folio. Gmail has a, a real estate software called folio. I pay them like $14 a month just to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they have other functions like they you can mm -hmm. actually Folio, similar, I think, to how you use TC Docs, but it's not robust. Right. Um, so I don't use it for that. I simply use it because what it does is inbox it's a, management. Yeah, and it's a smart, it's an intuitive smart software. So what it does is when you create the smart folder, you put in the address and stuff, and you put in the parties and the deals. As soon as it sees anything with those items, with that address, with the party's name or something that they pick up on, it intuitively puts that folder in that or puts that email into the proper folder. Now, it's still so now when I see it in my inbox and I address it, I can just archive it instead of dragging it anywhere. Right. I still don't fully trust it. So I do check sometimes. <laughs> Like, it's just my mind is like, okay, mm -hmm. did it take it? Are, are we sure? <laughs> right. But it's helpful because it's just like, okay, now I can just archive it. It helps me to have it. I just learned about archiving like last year because I'm like thinking you have to do. So that's why I would have a million things still in my inbox because I'm scared to delete it or I'm scared. Right. It's, it's but if you archive gonna, you're going to forget about it. Yeah. But if you archive it, even if you have to, even if you did forget about it, if you archive it and you remember, if they like, oh, I sent you an email last week, then you can just search that person's name in the archive yeah. and it'll be there, you know. But then also the folio is an extra backup to knowing that it's in the proper folder. So that's one thing that I use um, that I like that I used to be manual with. The other thing is calendar management is a part of what we do for our agents. Um, Very important. We're not, yeah, we're not. At the end of the day, the agent still needs to know what's going on with their mm -hmm. transaction and be responsible for those dates. But we're there to kind of help with tools to help remind them, whether it's a reminder email, as well as having it on the calendar. So TC Docs did not have this previously. They, they just added this in the last couple of years where it has a, G, um, a Google Calendar yeah. um, integration. Mm -hmm. So um, now I no longer have to separately as a separate task, put in these dates in the calendar. It automatically does it when I set the task up and when I onboard the transaction. So that's been a time saver and a hack as well. Those, those, I think those two. Yeah. like I, <laughs> I think, you know, as TCs, it's important to have your own transaction management platform outside of what a brokerage provides to you. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Skyslope or. Yes, which so I love. Oh, I, I think Skyslope is great, but it's not as TC friendly as like a, say a TC docs would be or any other TC specific yeah. platform. So right. even just listening to you speak, I'm like, I don't think I'm using all the features like I should be. <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to go do some research after this and see where I can. Yeah. I mean, I, there are some, what I like about, and this isn't a, I don't know, we should, uh, it's just a, this isn't a, we don't get paid for talking about TC docs. Everybody. I know, that's why I'm trying not to like mention them too much. Yeah. But that's why I right. said I'm willing to change if I need to. Yeah. Or the but, other ones I've tried, I love what they offer, mm -hmm. but it was so hard to set it up. Yeah. I spent like $100 by allowing free trials to go past the trial date 
trying to set those things up several times, like over several, like it can be a year later and I'm trying to, okay, I'm gonna try it again. Yeah. And it's just so hard to set up. Like when I set something up, I'm ready to get started. Like within the next day, I'll give it a weekend tops. And that's basically where I, and I'm not spending 24 hours on it, but it's like the couple hours allowed. I'm the same. And that's kind of where I landed. So it's not so much like, like exactly. So it's not so much that everyone should be using that specific company. It's more so when you are shopping as a TC for your own transaction management platform, go with what is easy for you to set up and what speaks to you. And and if you're, if you're not going to change it, you can always change it over. Exactly. You could do the month to month payment or commit yeah. to one year. Thank you for bringing that up as well, because I think a lot of TCs aren't aware that 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 stuff matters. You know, yeah. you don't and have to pick it because I told you or because Courtney right. said, that, like you pick what works for you. And I spent a weekend doing like three different trials at once. Yeah, and I was like, the, and which one was, you You finished the TC, the, you finished the I one. Finished the trials, yeah. <laughs> like exactly. one trials, you finished it and had what you needed in place by the time it was over. Right. Right other ones where you still trying to figure out you know one thing so that's that's what turned me off from the other one as well so I can do- totally relate yeah definitely keep that in mind TCs or anyone working in oh I was gonna add mm-hmm. and don't feel like you need to sign up for any of them until oh, you yeah. are making money in your business yes use paper checklists until you're getting I would say consistently six to and up I and know. even six to feel kind of but I mean consistently consistently five or six a month then I don't really and it, it, it's not that well some of them do cost a lot but you, you know do month to month them, yeah some of them are like five to seventy dollars a month that's one of the cheaper ones and even though it sounds cheap if you're not making you know if you're not consistently and like have really solidified and like really decided that you're gonna do this like right. a real business then just use the paper checklist until you get to that point. I agree. And I didn't start using a TC management platform until the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I broke out and did my own business in 2018. So keep in mind, like that's a great point, Courtney. Thank you for sharing that because don't feel, yeah, don't feel pressure to spend money on things right away. Like I, for me, I gradually, I I grew with my business. I like Mm -hmm. to say I I, I grow as I go. And You know, I got started. First thing I got was a laptop. Yeah. Like, let me just start there. I'm going to invest and keep it. You know, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a financial advisor, nothing. But keep in mind, if you are running this as a business, these things are also tax write-offs. Mm-hmm. So in a way it pays for itself over time and right. you're still going to be saving money in a sense. So definitely get yourself a good accountant to explain mm-hmm. all that to you, but you don't, Thank you. So, so thank you for saying that you do not have to buy everything or get everything set up from day one. You need to figure out if you are actually committed to this job and this world first yep. and build that consistent flow of business and clientele and your roster, because your roster is not always going to have business coming to you. So that's why it's important to constantly be networking and communicating and, and, you know, setting yourself up in, in a way that's marketable, but also beneficial to you personally. You don't have to sign up for everything all at once. So don't feel pressure as a new entrepreneur to dive straight in and and get the LLC or get the office space or get the automation all set up at once, like grow with your business, listen to your budget, because you're going to need to know how to also budget and reallocate money differently than when you were at a nine to five. Because when you're working a nine to five, you have those checks coming in consistently. I mean, there's no guarantee with any job you could get laid off or fired or quit overnight. But at the same time, budgeting as an entrepreneur is, is different than someone working a job. So how did you determine your what you were going to charge for your services and the services that you were going to offer? Are you still kind of working around, you know, working mm-hmm. that out or... No, um, so when I first started, like I said, my one client who's my mentor, she decided to pay me three fifty. I didn't. She didn't even ask me. She just started to pay me. So <laughs> I didn't. I didn't give her this amount. But when I decided to offer it to other people, I did do a little bit of research and saw that that was kind of in line. I think I started off though 
when I opened it to other clients, I think I started off at 375, if I'm not mistaken. And again, I just got that from kind of researching. Mm -hmm. um, because, that, Like I said, I, I don't know when I found out that the TC was a thing. Like, I don't know if I Googled real estate assistant, like, I don't know what I did to make me finally that aha moment go off. Like, right. oh, I do this already. Yeah. <laughs> um, at that time is when I was like, okay, well, how much, you know, how much do you, let me do some, some research on that amount. Yes. Um, I have since raised my rates. Um, so my, my rate now is $400 a transaction, which is pretty much, that's pretty average. much that's average. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell my students too, I don't believe in starting off cheaper just because you're new. Mm -hmm. you're, you're investing in your education by having a coach who's me. So you've invested in that. You know, I've taught you the basics of what you need to know. And from here, you should be able to know what you don't know so that you can build on that knowledge. You're ready. You're more than ready to start accepting clients by the time you're done with the course. So I don't believe, you know, a lot of, I get this question a lot is, you know, should I start off cheaper? Should I offer one for free? No, no, uh, <laughs> no. you know, you should, <laughs> you know, I, in my course, I also teach them how to, how to talk in a discovery call. Like to me, that was always um, my biggest concern as a business owner when I first started just getting out of that employee mindset to business owner was yes. how do you talk what do you say on the call like so when I was working with my mentor as a real estate agent I would be like I would go to her office and like sit with her and listen to how she handled the call and that gave me more confidence because she's asking them so you know more than what's their what's your budget? How much money do you have saved? Do you have a 401? Like she was to me, they could come across intrusive, but you you as a business owner who doesn't want your time wasted and does and you're educating as well, you you have an end game to these questions. You're not just trying to be nosy. Right. Um, and, but it was the style in which she did it. It was conversational. It wasn't an interview style like how I'm saying it, but she did get those questions answered. Yeah. And even as PCs, we have to get those questions answered because not about budget, obviously, but about, um, you know, expressing what your fees and are and in, in, in an, as a matter of fact way. Yes, this is the fee. No, we don't offer any discounts no, like and being OK with being firm. These are my not, hours. Yeah. The days your I boundaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but it's just a part of the conversation. So understanding how the conversation should sound. And so I offer actual recordings of real conversations. Like I've rec recorded real calls, discovery calls that I've had, because that takes a lot of stress out to just yes. hear what, what kind of stuff am I supposed to be saying? You know, so it, I used to be nervous about it can feel very broad and yeah, like, so just understanding, yeah, understanding, you know, how, you know, how to actually ask a question like, you know, so, you know, what would you say is your pipeline or, you know, how's business going and, and just knowing how to just be quiet and listen and then mm -hmm. how to kind of follow up with that or, you know, um, it's not like a, it's a, it's a dance. Um, and it that's is. just with anything just being able to have a conversation where you're not selling, you're attracting, you know, so that's, that's before you get them on the phone, you're attracting with your marketing and things like that. You're not selling it. If an agent feels like $400, a transaction is not worth it to them or too much, then that's not my ideal client. And, you know, and that's fine. That's simple. Uh, you know, but that's just, what it is because they're not m mindset isn't where they find enough value in what we offer exactly exactly cheap doesn't necessarily mean better either you know yeah. so you have to stand firm and if you are going to charge that low you still want to give 100 percent quality work you know i have i have a story about that um so the brokerage that i hang my license with we have an internal facebook group and I am a, an affiliate, like I can market and things in there, but like they, they didn't, I wasn't the only one that they allowed to do that. So there was an agent who, after I, you know, I'm known as the TC company, you know, like people know me because I'm always adding value in the group. I'm not always selling my stuff, but I'm always responding to questions and adding value. Yes. Um, 
So she just out of nowhere comes with her marketing stuff and she's charging like $250 a transaction. She worked nights and weekends, like just no boundaries. Um, and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to, I mean, part of me was like, how am I going to compete? But another part was like, I'm not going to compete. You're not. I'm not working nights and weekends and I'm not lowering my price. So um, I had clients that um, called, I talked to that day, like one of my clients, she's, um, she was like, I saw that. And she was like, but just like you said, you get what you pay for. She's like, I believe you get what you pay for. And no, I'm not, I wouldn't leave just for price, you know? And so that's the kind of loyalty and client that you want, but you want, you only get that when you're offering a superb service too, you know? So you have to, you have to give to, to, to get as well. I could not <laughs> agree more <laughs> because yeah. I have, I have worked with clients that, well, can you just give me a discount the first couple of deals? And this is early on in my, in my journey. And I would say yes. Yeah. And, and my work, the quality was, was fine, but it would be their attitude. They mm-hmm. thought they were entitled. Yeah. Yeah. It was the entitlement. It was the disrespect. It was, well, I'm checking my email now. So I need to talk to you. Attitude. Right. You know, and I'm like, it's 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. I'm not doing that. Right. I, I responded to this email to let you 10, know 10 a.m. <laughs> to let you know that this is the update. Right. It's pretty specific. Right. So, like you said, it's a dance, but it's it's a dance battle sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you have the discovery call so that yes. you can feel. And then also just we all have to learn about boundaries. Like I, that's a part of the course as well, is just boundaries. But you know, my story is I, here in Atlanta, we have um, what's called a due diligence period. Every market doesn't have that where you can, where a buyer can terminate for any reason or no reason at all. They can wake up if it's before due diligence and say they don't want it, they can terminate and get their earnest money back, whether or not they did an inspection or whatever. Right. Um, so a part of um, what that gives the buyer a lot of leverage. So when you're working with the buyer's agent, they're responsible for, if there was an inspection, for getting an amendment to address concerns to the seller well with well enough time before the due diligence period ends, because the seller is going to be more apt to do those things if it's within due diligence. If it's after that, they can say no, and then the buyer can't get their earnest money back. But if they get that uh, report during the due diligence period, and they say no, then a buyer can walk and the seller doesn't want that. So anyway, it's a strategic thing. And so very early on when I first started accepting other clients, and again, I had been doing this for my mentor Mm -hmm. because I didn't know any better too (laughs) um, about the boundaries because I didn't have a business. I was just helping her. Right. Um, She was a friend, became a friend over time as well. And so like, I remember I would wake up out my sleep, like, oh my God, did we send out the, you know, the (laughs) ATAC? And it's like, that's not our job. So anyway, but luckily, but my mentor was on top of it anyway. Like she, even if I did forget, like she would. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, this age, I'm, I'm opening the business to other people. And she's like, well, I feel, so this, the, all of our amendments end at 11.59 PM. So okay. like, whatever you're going to do, you need to terminate or something by then so that the buyer, you can protect the buyer's earnest money. So she, I remember the conversation. She's like, well, I just feel like, you know, you should be the one, you know, if, if we don't get it back by 1145, then you need to send out the termination. Mm-mm. And it's like, she's like, I just feel like, you know, that's a part of, and, and I, I didn't agree with her, but I was, I didn't know what to say. So yeah. I was like, yeah. okay. and I did it. And then after that is when I made my rules about, you know, we're nine to six. If something happens over the weekend or as a matter of fact, now I don't even do the ATAC anymore. <laughs> like I, yeah, that's the one amendment that we don't do because it's too time sensitive. Right. And, you know, yeah, it could go we'll on help, all night. Yeah, we'll help <laughs> with time sensitive amendments, but we're not going to be resp- like as an agent, they still have their, they, they still have their responsibilities. Right. So it doesn't fall on the TC. So it, that's about learning about boundaries. Yeah. I, I can't stress that enough. It's just boundaries are so important. And what is what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do, you must communicate that. 
Um, yeah. And even if you're working with someone and you've established a relationship and maybe two years into it, you have a change of heart, have that conversation with them and right. update them on where you're at. Like, oh, well, I'm actually eliminating this as a service, but, yeah. or, that's I'm what adding, I mean. or I'm adding this on as a service. And that's, you know, that's you doing your due diligence too, as as an entrepreneur and as a, you know, TC and being responsible and accountable for all of that communication is just, it's ongoing. It's, it's, right. it's, it's never and ending. To me, the, I've learned this in both businesses, real estate sales and the TC business. The quickest way to lose a client or to get a bad uh, perception mm-hmm. is unmet expectations. Yes. Because you didn't say something uh, when I, uh, you know, one of my real estate sales, I had uh, some buyers that had relocated here from another state. I found them a home. They came, they loved it. They purchased the home. Two years later, they wanted to sell that home and buy a new house. I'm like, great. They called me up like, yeah, we're ready to do that. I did not do the normal sit down with them, listing appointment, walk through, discuss everything that's going to happen. I didn't do that with them because I'm like, oh, they called me. And, you know, I just told them, oh, I have a photographer there next, you know, next week and we'll get it listed. That's it. That was the hardest deal because they had these expectations that I was going to be doing certain things. Like I would have been able to tell them like, you know, open house, we'll do that if necessary, but it's not necessarily something that is a top priority. This is how we're going to market the house. This is what you can expect. This is what the homes are on staying on the market for in your area. So that they're not thinking that because it's been on, it's been there for five days that it's a problem. Um, Just every little thing. And I, I learned that then that it was unmet expectations. Like not only did I sell their house, I saved the deal. Like the buyer's financing fell through. I got them a new lender um, and got them closed. Yeah. And like I like I did a lot. Like, you know, I did a great job, knock on wood. <laughs> but because of unmet expectations, they did not buy their next house with me. The house that they ended uh-huh. up buying is not with me. And they set me down and was like, you know, we just feel like you didn't work as hard as you did for us on the buyer side but the buyer side is a whole different set of circumstances they don't don't know that they don't know that because I didn't explain that and it was my fault so that taught me just even with the TC side when you have your discovery I find I don't like talking on the phone but I don't just have it where they can just a stranger could just send me a contract I need to have the discovery call so that you can understand um, how we work, mm-hmm. what to expect, what we, you know, what we handle, what we, what you handle, our expectations for you as the yes. agent, you know, it's a 15 or 20 minute call. It doesn't have to be long, but that way you've, um, you've covered what you need to cover. So there's no hard feelings. There's no surprises when they ask you to send out the ATAC and you then, then you then have to tell them, oh, well, we don't do that. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't. You have to lay it out all up front. I love that. I love that. So I'm going to wrap some, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, (laughs) Just a couple more questions, but I have a segment called the keys and uh, basically I'm giving you the keys. There are no gatekeepers here is one of my slogans. And you've given us so many keys this entire episode. And I thank you for that. again. (laughs) But what is a key you could share with upcoming TCs, uh, maybe they're a a year in, but they're still, they haven't found their footing. What is some advice or courses that you, you know, want to share with the audience and where they should start? So I would say for me, like I mentioned earlier, I'm like heavy on Facebook for research purposes and stuff. So there are some great groups on Facebook. I don't know if we can mention them on here, but you can just search transaction coordinator and it should direct you to the different groups, join all of them because there are gems to be dropped in all of them. And as I feel like they don't get QP information, everybody's so helpful. Secondly, um, I have a group as well on Facebook, um, the work from anywhere movement on Facebook. You can follow that. That group though, is for really, really newbies, like almost people that, that are interested Their their curiosity is peaked about the whole TC industry, but they haven't, they're like very new. 
Um, so you may or may not if you've already been in the business. Um, and then also, um, I do offer a group coaching course called the TC Playbook. And um, in it, we use um, my, my framework called the Blitz Method. So by the end of the course, you will have your business branded, legitimized. So that means your structure will be set up. Um, we'll go over mindset, imagination to mindset is, or, or imagination to manifestation is the name of that module where, like we talked about earlier, it sounds very new agey. Everybody's talking about mindset right now, but I can't stress the importance of it, of having, yeah, yeah having your firm why in place, having, having things aligned with how you want your life to look and really imagining and, and focusing on what, what a new, what your life looks like, ideally. Right. Um, so anyway, so we go over that. Um, and then we get into the nitty gritty with um, the T and blitz, which is techniques and tools. Um, we use actual contracts with from a TC standpoint, what it is that um, a TC needs to look for when they first receive a contract. And then, you know, all of the we have a real estate jargon journal. So all of the Amazing. words that I'm mentioning, like ATAC and, yeah. you know, COE, close of escrow and just all of this stuff, which, by the way, somebody said COE to me like last year. And I'm like, what is that? Because <laughs> we don't call it that here. But, you know, um, so all of those types of words so that you're not going into it cold and looking crazy when you're trying to, <laughs> to work with a new client when you're brand new. Um, and then the final one is systems. So like the systems that we talked about today, whether it's free or paid, you know, because I believe you should start off with free systems. So we have all of the templates and things like that, email templates. Um, and then I also have a separate part, which is um, CAST, which is client attraction systems and techniques where you can hear discovery calls and understand like how to, um, how to have a discovery call and how to market it to attract clients. Um, so I do have that. Um, and Google is your best friend as well. Yes. Um, look on Google to see what people are charging for TC services in your area so that you can understand, you know, how much you want to charge. Um, it's really easy to kind of, um, going back to the imagination to manifestation, it's easy to kind of um, map out how much you want to make as a TC because you know, if you charge $400 a transaction, how many you need to do to be six figures. I think you only need like eight a month to, you know, to be, to get to a really great to a good number. Yeah. Good number. So, um, you know, when you're thinking about imagination to manifestation, think about how much you want to make and how many, you know, deals you need to get a month and how you're going to go. And then you reverse engineer into how you're going to get yes. to that point. Um, so that's perfect. Yeah, so that was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> and then what is one goal you don't mind sharing publicly today to kind of keep yourself accountable in the next Ooh. 12 months? So my goal, so for me, um, we talked about how the TC stuff has been coming up a lot, like over the last three years. Yes. And I say that to say over the last three years, especially since the pandemic, but even prior to that, like real estate was simple. Our agent clients were just getting a buyer, getting them under contract, sending us the contracts. Like if you sell real estate, you weren't having a hard time with buyers because the interest rates, um, it, it's not that the interest rates were so low um, because prior to the pandemic, they were probably about where they are now, maybe in the fours. Um, but then the pandemic had artificially low interest rates. So now, even though the interest rates aren't necessarily that high, they're so much higher than they were when they were artificial. And so buyers are getting cold feet. So it's really affecting the whole market. Yeah. And so if it affects the real estate market, it's going to affect us as TCs because our clients aren't bringing in as many contracts and things right. like that. And so what we're having to do, not only ourselves, but our real estate clients, we've got to get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And that means whether it was door knocking when you were fresh and hungry as a real estate agent, then that's what you need to go back to. Yeah. <laughs> Full calling, prospecting. And for us as TC business owners, the same thing goes. Like 
I have a TC mentor who has a multi-million dollar business. And she's like, you got to pick up the phone and call your clients. And that is the hardest Same. thing <laughs> for me to do. Same. Whether we're in the contract together, doing it at the same time, just calling us, you know, say, hey, or after, or, or if I haven't talked to him in a while, mm -hmm. like for years, it didn't really matter because there was somebody else knocking on my door to right. send me It was contract. just flowing. And now so it's right like, now, it's flowing not down. So much. So you have to, again, realign yourself. Okay, well, if I know I need to get eight deals a month, I can't just sit here and just twiddle my thumbs or just take what I have in front of me. Yeah. As a business owner, I have to do what I need to do to bring more fresh business in. And it's the simplest thing for some is to just call people up. But for people like me, that is not simple. And me. <laughs> it is not simple. <laughs> It's the free, it's free. It don't cost nothing, but it's like, I always got a million other things that I could put in front of that. Oh, and it's easily. not, yeah. And it's not getting me new business. So, um, the good thing is my mentor said that it can be text message long as long as it was a Some painful conversation, then it counts. So I will, so my goal is to do more communicating with my existing clients, past clients, um, and really making it a part of my business plan every week. Um, so yeah, so that's, it sounds hard. I mean, it sounds easy, but that is like my big, my big goal. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that and being vulnerable because I can definitely relate to that. I'll go start a whole podcast before I have to make phone calls. <laughs> I'll, exactly. get on, I'll get on YouTube and make videos and go live. And then let me just send you this video. Yeah. Instead of calling you, right. you know, and it's like, right. I think it has to do with just, you know, my introverted nature, which. Yeah. The stories we tell ourselves and. Yeah. That's true. And, yeah. yeah. But as a transaction coordinator, that's also why we do a lot of, we, we don't mind being behind the scenes because we just want right. to just put our head in the work and just do Move. that. Move but on that's just a small part when you're also the business owner. Like if you become a TC working for somebody else, that's fine. Yeah. But if you're responsible for also generating business, you've got to do more than just the work. It's not about the work. Exactly. I, that's, I couldn't agree more. And that was a perfect ending to a wonderful conversation. Um, I will put all of Courtney's information, the links to your courses, her website, um, in the description of this episode. But Courtney, thank you so much for your time and sharing. I would, you know, if all works out, we'll have you back on in the future for future episodes. And um, absolutely, yeah. So, where can people follow you on social media? What's the best way to, uh, or or the best place you would like? For yeah, them? absolutely. So. Um... On social media, you can follow either at Work From Anywhere Movement or ATL Courtney Rozier, R O Z I E R. Um, my website is www.thetcplaybook.com for the course. Um, for any agents out there looking for a TC, um, you can find us um, on Instagram at Time Freedom TC. Amazing. And just remind the audience what uh, states you currently TC for as well. Absolutely. Currently, I'm open to every state except for California. Um, but currently, <laughs> <to> California. <laughs> right. Definitely for California. Um, for, um, currently, we have um, clients in Texas, Florida, Georgia, of course, and Illinois. But we're open to other states um, as well. We can handle pretty much any state except California. <laughs> <laughs> or not yet. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to refer those to you. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> right. Well, thank you again, Courtney. This was so much fun. I am very grateful for your time and just your journey, your story. I think a lot of people in this industry are going to relate, especially the moms out there that are interested either in this career or just not sure where to take off or get started. So definitely hit up Courtney for more information to learn about how she's rocking it in this real estate world and how we can all grow together. Um, but until then, head to transactioncarepodcast.com to stream this episode and other episodes and care for yourself 
care for your wealth. Your time is worth it. Let's coordinate. Talk soon.